Hi, this is Gautam. For today's episode, we're going to look at this book, Rabindranath Tagore and Interpretation by Sabe Sachi Bhattacharya. Now, if you look at this book, uh, what the author has tried to do is uh, take extensively a lot of information uh, from the writings of Rabindranath Tagore and using his writings, not just the ones which are which were poems or novels, but including his letters uh, to try to identify and frame what exactly is this man Rabindranath Tagore is. So first, kudos to the author for going through uh, you know thousands and thousands of pages of documents and uh, trying to find the right ones to understand uh, the the mindset of this uh, eccentric personality. Now, what the author has done, he has broadly divided uh, Rabindranath Tagore's life into different parts, uh, starting from his childhood, uh, where he's closely connected with the family, you know, um, mostly stays in the house, uh, his education, and then uh, how, he stri- how he starts to participate in the uh, quest for freedom struggle, a brief phase compared to his poetry phase, and then from then on, how exactly he gets uh, dissociated with the uh, Indian national movement, and then his focus on uh, writings, writings, uh, trying to reach the not, reach not just Bengal and the Indian landscape, but also writing enough to reach uh, the Western world too. And finally, we we see him uh, in the uh, Shanti Niketan uh, University. How he wants to create a uh, uh, create a, a reasonable or what you call the right education system instead of the rote learning method which still is followed in India. Now, there is a popular uh, conception that uh, Ravindranath Tagore's, uh, Tagore is very wealthy and he did not have financial issues. Now, though the author agrees that Ravindranath Tagore's family was uh, very wealthy, uh, with regarding to access to financial resources, uh, the author writes that Ravindranath Tagore had to struggle and has to really wait uh, until the death of his father to have proper access to finances. Uh, his childhood was mostly, uh, you know, spent in solitude, and uh, you know, th- there was not, there was no question of gender equality within his family, where uh, females were uh, mostly private educated in their houses, and there was a strict adherence to this uh, concept of, uh, you know, uh, paying respect to your elders and not questioning authority. Now, Rabindranath Tagore's vision and his understanding of the freedom movement was well ahead of several national leaders at the time uh, because uh, long before the arrival of Gandhi, Tagore has identified that the Indian freedom struggle is actually failing to uh, incorporate the larger masses in its struggle and it was mostly associated with intellectuals. Uh, Continuing this uh, discussion, his perception on nationalism also undergoes certain changes after the uh, beginning of World War One, where uh, he understands and writes a critique on nationalism, stating that it is because of the issue of nationalism that there is too much of conflict in this world. This does alienate him uh, from the uh, freedom struggle. And then slowly he goes on to concentrate uh, on his writings, where we have the uh, poetry writing of Gitanjali and also his uh, you know promotion Uh, promotion of his translations uh, in the Western Hemisphere with the aid of uh, Eats and several others. One of the interesting discussions which I found in the book is that uh, even though uh, author Rabindranath Tagore and uh, Mahatma Gandhi were on uh, different sides when it came to discussions, they were really good friends. For example, there was a sketching critique uh, from Rabindranath Tagore that he disagrees uh, with Mahatma Gandhi and uh, three fundamental points that uh, even though the Western Hemisphere uh, did uh, did lead to colonization and exploitation of India's resources, it has to be understood that they did have a better science and technology and that is something which we need to adopt from them. The same applies secondly to the principle of Satyagraha. Tagore questions what essentially is the purpose of Satyagraha because it really doesn't achieve a lot of aims. And uh, even the uh, third point regarding the burning of foreign clothes, uh, he actually said, well, you can use indigenous clothes provided uh, you have uh, enough production and you're able to satisfy your needs. But uh, one way or the other, if the clothes which are imported, if they are actually answering the economic question that they are cheaper, then uh, what is the point of going towards indigenous clothes if it's really not going to solve the issue? The greatest challenges for the greatest challenges in his life uh, is possibly with reference to uh, financing and maintaining the University of Shanti Niketan because uh, you know most of his income from the Nobel uh, Prize for Literature uh, and the associated interest rates seems to have dropped uh, slowly with the Great Depression and he really did not have a steady source of income. Uh, that is where there is a conscious realization within Tagore that he is able to 
finance shanti niketan through the revenues of the zamindari system and here he understands that he is a paradox he is an elite himself that's to finance the education system which he finds as an alternative uh, to the western education colonial colonial system is technically from a western model of economic exploitation itself the fact that the man is able to realize that something paradoxical exists is a testament to his uh, intelligence and wisdom So as pointed out in the uh, earlier section, the author is able to convey a lot of critical, uh, you know, uh, points with reference to uh, how Tagore's, uh, you know, association with uh, different phases of life and even the national movement and his participation in literature has evolved. Now, the only, the, the, the only topic which I felt a personally a distance to, okay, which. i wouldn't say it's a flaw in the book but maybe an absence of connect which i personally wasn't uh, able to establish is uh, simply the question of the, his literary works for example several of the titles uh, have naturally will have the name in bengali and for a non bengali when you read you know when he says that you know during these 5 years he produced all those titles uh, since you do not know the meaning of the word possibly there is a slight amount of disconnect some of the works are very well explained as in how this this novel clearly uh, says or is a window into how rabindranath tagore was thinking but certain titles really did not make the connection and uh, there were several paragraphs and discussions which focused on his evolution of literature but uh, maybe since i was more interested in the uh, history part and the social dimensions i really couldn't connect with the liter- literary ones so maybe uh, rather than being a uh, you know a, a flaw with reference to writing i think it was more to do with uh, a personal choice so that's it for today's review meet you in the next one pretty soon bye for now